probably three days ago they started to come in towards the house and then yeah I think yesterday is when they got up on the fence and now they're there there's lots of spiders <laughs> the spiders crickets everything Now, climate change, we know, has made our lives a lot more difficult. The seas are rising, our summers are hotter, the cyclones are getting bigger. But for Australia, the problem is a bit more immediate. In Australia, they're dealing with animal invasions. Spiders are blanketing fields and roads with their webs, and millions of mice are cutting their way through farms. It may sound like some heavenly reckoning, but these animals are just reacting to the extreme weather. Here's a report. Australia, home of the outback and untamed wilderness. An animal kingdom where humans are mere subjects. Nothing's a surprise down under. It's all about how active your imagination is. Don't believe us? See for yourself. Welcome to the state of Victoria, where the spiders have mounted an invasion. Scientists call it ballooning. Victoria saw some wild weather last week. Dozens of trees were toppled and parts of the state were flooded. Sensing danger, the spiders fled. They took refuge in these fields and road signs. Before long, they were weaving webs all over the place. And this is the result. A countryside blanketed by sleek silvery coils. The spiders are long gone, but their webs remain. Elsewhere, there's another invasion underway. A deluge of mice gnawing and biting their way across eastern Australia. This week, they reached here. The Wellington Correctional Centre. Authorities could see the disastrous headlines. Prison break, the mice plague edition. So, they acted fast. Around 200 staff and 420 inmates have been shifted out. And now the cleanup begins. The rodents are hanging from the roof and burrowing into walls. Once they are cleared, the inmates will return. As far as threat assessment goes, the mice are far more dangerous. Millions of them have invaded homes and farms. At night, it's almost like the entire house has come alive. The footboards are squeaking. The attic is bustling and there's certainly something running around under your bed. Not fun at all. The mice plague is almost exclusive to Australia. They come when heavy rains follows a long spell of drought. Locals say this plague is the worst they can remember. And experts predict it could get worse. Australia's seesaw climate is causing these strange events. Unusually long dry spells followed by biblical rains. Hardly surprising that the animals are acting out. The government is using an acute poison to repel the mice. But how many rodents can you kill? And how long before the next wave of rodent road rash? Bureau report, we are. Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory on it as due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. It was in the gospel of God, looking up the standard of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. The priest, Mahalaya. Coming back with another lesson through the spirit, going into the plagues of Egypt. As you look here, I have a diagram. I typed in the plagues of Egypt and this came up and they gave us all 10 plagues from the waters turning into blood, disease on livestock, uh, the frogs, the gnats, the flies, the darkness, which was three days and three nights, uh, death of the firstborn, the locusts, hell and fire, unbearable boils. Um, now we're in modern day Egypt. With Australia being part of uh, NATO and the EU uh, infrastructure, this B system, which plagues are set to hit this place. So what you witness out here in Australia, 
was a rat or a mouse and a spider plague, okay? And the brother has sent the video earlier about these spiders uh, overtaking people's homes out there in Australia because, I mean, technically, you could say it sits at a low altitude to where it's geographically located on the globe. Um, and if you look at America as well, they considered America a low land, okay? Which means a valley or a low land. You got places like Louisiana that sits below sea level, okay? So, uh... You have a lot of floods out there, okay? A lot of historical floods, um, like Hurricane Katrina, which that was set up. But we believe Esau broke the levees, but those levees were only built to sustain a certain amount of uh, force and exertion. You see what I'm saying? So uh, through the spirit, when all hell break loose in Babylon, we're going to start seeing these things. Because I want to say two years ago, you had a plague of locusts that plagued Las Vegas, okay? And also you had a plague of frogs. That plague parts of Florida, man, poisonous frogs that was popping up in people's pools. So this is just a small taste of what the Most High is getting ready to bring because of the disruptions of the geographical lands. Okay, Esau's fracking. He's shooting rockets into outer space. Uh, he's digging. Okay, he's disrupting the weather through his chemicals, his geoengineering, and all these things are going to cause disruptions within the Earth's magnetic field, poles, so to speak, polar shifts. Okay, like when you watch the movie 2012, it was based on basically the pole shifting place because of all the digging and the the the, the torture or the uh, abuse that this man has given the earth. But nonetheless, it's still all plagues that are heavily farther on the left hand side. So you people in America, since you're so wicked, you're going to get the plagues of rats, of locusts, okay, uh, mice, which we already technically have a mice plague here anyway. Okay, especially within these old apartment buildings, because uh, the apartment upstairs for me has been derelict for over a year, and I can literally hear mice crawling upstairs in this part in this apartment up there. They getting in between the, the the floor penetrates and the ceiling grids and stuff like that, and the vents because these buildings are old, and when they were doing the construction on the buildings, um, they knocked a lot of the mice out of place, so a lot of them were just running rampant field mice. And they get in the houses, you know, uh, in the time of the cold. Uh, I think I've caught like three of them little motherfuckers, man, with, over this season. You know, um, but nonetheless, um, they're in apartments. They, they're, they're in people's homes and people's basements. They're everywhere, okay? And it's going to intensify. And mainly the spiders, man, okay? Like uh, the spider that the brother showed yep. right here. Um, oh, there it is! No! Hold on. Y'all pay attention here. That's fucked. Holy shit. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Oh, there it is! Okay, from what I was reading, that could be a giant huntsman spider. Okay, a giant huntsman spider. So, let's go and do the research on it real quick. The hell is heavy.com. Oh. Give me one second here. Go to Google... Ooh, giant huntsman spider. Giant huntsman spider. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Okay, this thing is huge, man. It looks like a big tarantula. Now, if you go out in, in Hawaii, they have what they call a king spider, which is similarly big, okay, but it's mainly the leg size. But look at this. Now, I don't know if this is a blown up image. But nonetheless, this is the shit they're dealing with in Australia. So you people in America, when the Lord really opens up these spirits out here, you're going to start seeing this, man. All right. Now, if you look at this image here, the guy had one in his hand. It's not that big, pretty much the size of a tarantula. So you can assume that those pretty much those pictures are blown up. But nonetheless, you do have spiders that get that big. OK, and these are all part of the plagues that are coming to Babylon the Great. So, matter of fact, I'm gonna look up and see are our huntsmen spiders dangerous? It says huntsmen are not daily to humans, according to Australian Reptile Park. Although huntsman spiders are venomous and their bites can be painful to humans, they do not cause anything more serious than mal nausea or headaches. Usually, localized swelling and pain are only symptoms of a huntsman spider. All right. What the hell? But nonetheless, when the Lord put the spirit 
on these new created beasts to do certain damages to you people, man, these things will become venomous because the Lord controls all things. And I can say this right now, spiders are one of the biggest phobias of Americans, man, okay? Everybody that I've known, or every female from the mother, uh, sister, cousin, or just women in general, they are all afraid of spiders, man. I even know men that don't like spiders and what really fucks them up is the legs, okay? The, the way they move is, is unnatural, you know what I'm saying? And that's the spirit because I know this is coming because last night and a few nights ago, I seen an apparition in the form of a spider, man, okay? It was a few nights ago and I was waking up and you know, like they say, your mind's playing tricks on you, but I seen like an apparition of a spider floating through the damn air, like crawling towards the room. And then when I looked at the the utility closet door last night upon waking up, I kind of seen it on the door. You know what I'm saying? Now they can say your mind's playing a trick on you, could have been a dream. But if that's the first image I saw in the dark and I saw that on the door, then that means that it's something that's taking a form of that. Okay, so that means that plagues are coming to Babylon the Great. Something big is getting ready to happen, man. You know what I'm saying? So through the spirit, man, we got to be very careful uh, how we offend, you know, the Lord whatsoever, man, because we don't want to be caught up in this in this play. But you people in America, you getting ready to get fucked up, man. All right. So this is the book of Exodus nine. And I'm going to start at verses uh, 13. It says, and the Lord said it to Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, Yahweh of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. And who's the modern day Pharaoh? Esau. OK, he's not going to let the children of Israel go. So therefore, the Lord is going to have to bring back Yahweh Shai to come and deliver us because, hey, the Most High is heart in the heart of Pharaoh, the so-called white man. It says, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy service and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me in the earth. OK, so, hey, the plagues are coming, man, and we're already seeing them in the form of this weather. OK, people are getting sick from this uh, dark winter, so to speak. Okay, because I was just looking at the news trends and you have a fluctuation of temperatures, man. Okay, you got chemtrails that they're spraying in the air. People are sick. People are suffering from vertigo, sinus infections, man. This man is trying to do a number on the people. Okay, it is because they're wicked. And the Most High, whoever he don't have mercy on, he's going to allow them to succumb to these different illnesses and viruses out there. And as well as these plagues, man. Because, hey, the plagues of locusts are coming back. The plagues of uh, flies are coming back, biting flies. Okay, like you go down in the Amazon, you got flies as big as my damn hand, you know? Uh, uh, mountain lions are popping up in Florida. All types of stuff is happening, man, you know? And it says here, and now, for now, I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou should be cut off from the earth, okay? So, hey, man, these plagues are getting ready to hit the planet Earth, man, at an all-time high, okay? Why? Because the Most High said it was going to happen, all right? Uh, Exodus 8 and 16 This is the book of Exodus 8 And I'm going to start at verses uh, Matter of fact, because this is the uh, plague of frogs But it says here I'm going to start at 1 It says, And Yahweh was speaking to Moses Go into Pharaoh and say it to him Thus says the Lord, let my people go That they may serve me And if thou refuse to let them go Behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly Which should go up and come into thy house and into thy bed chamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thy ovens and into thy kneading trials, man. Okay, so I'm gonna look up the word oven and see what it means. All right, because it could be talking about a literal oven that you bake food in, but let's see what it's talking about because you know the scriptures they have various meanings to them. All right, so uh, the oven this goes into Narah. Which means, yep, furnace, oven, pot, okay? And I'm assuming these were poisonous frogs because, hey, like I said, when they hit Florida a couple of years ago, you got frogs so venomous to the point of you touch them and hey, you can get sick. So if it came up upon their cooking artillery and their uh, utensils, it makes sense that these were poisonous frogs, man, okay? It says, for cooking, his furnace of hunger designed for evil of fire pot, okay? So going here, it says, all the frogs should come upon both thee and upon thy people and upon thy servants, man. Okay. And who are the servants of the modern day pharaohs? You Jakes and you other Edomites. All right. Because this time the Lord is going to smite you two thirds with these plagues. You're not, you're not leaving this Egypt. You're not leaving this Egypt. You're, you're staying here. 
Okay, the Most High. I'm not going to say he made a mistake of delivering Jake because it was all for his purpose. But the Most High ain't going to deliver you, Jake, so on his side, man. All right, you're going to sit here and you're going to burn. The ones of you that don't get caught up in the plagues and the riots and the FEMA camps, okay, ultimately you're going to get caught up in those nuclear missiles, which is the ultimate plague that's going to smite this planet, man, mainly this country. All right, those of you that don't survive that, you're going to get caught up in that nuclear missile, in the, in the nuclear holocaust, man, okay? And it reads here, and it says, And Moses or, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams and over the rivers and upon the ponds, and cause the frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Okay? They're smiting the earth for plagues, man. That's spiritual power right there. Okay? And we're going to have the power to do that, to sick certain things on people, man, when it gets, you know, all out hell. Let's just say if you surround it, let's just say if you end up making it out to the forest and you're surrounded by the martial law troops because you're trying to get away, you could, hey, through the spirit, man, look what Elisha did. Hey, he called out uh, uh, two she-bears and they killed 42 children, man, because they was mocking him. So, hey, you think the Lord can't do the same thing? You think the Most High can't do the same thing through us? We on a run and a prowl, we end up getting cornered. Hey, through the spirit, you could call a bear out of the damn woods. Out of You could call out fucking a bear out of a damn portal somewhere, man. And they come and devour them damn troops and you get away. So you have to expect miracles like that. Standards, man. Okay, because the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be a time of thinking outside of the box, man. Okay, at that time, Jacob's trouble, the impossible is going to be possible, man. Okay, you have to put yourself in a mind frame that there's going to be a lot of weird shit happening in that day. You know, that's when the unthinkable will become thinkable. You know, that's when the, the, the rules of reality will bend dramatically for the elect. Okay, you got to have, uh, uh, you got to believe that, you know, because, hey, at that time, the Lord is going to really merge the fourth dimension with this, with this dimension we're in. That's why you're going to have all types of cosmic activity, man, all types of demons popping up. Weird shit like that movie 13 Ghosts is a primary example of the fourth dimension being merged into the third dimension. Okay, when they found out how to unlock the, the cages that the ghosts were in, then hey, they found out how the, the ghosts were they was able to uh uh pre-navigate into the third dimension, man. And that's the reason why they had the power to kill people, you know. And Esau experiment with this siren stuff, extracting spirits from the spirit realm, man. Hey, it's gonna be a lot of crazy shit happening in that day. So once again, brothers, expect the unexpected or expect the unthinkable to happen in Jacob's trouble. Okay, the minute you may get in a jam, hey, call fire from heaven, man. You know, and do what you got to do. Okay, but that's going to come through faith and utter belief, man. Okay, and that's going to come when you at your wit's end. Because, look, right now, it's like if we had the power, Jake ain't going to be humble with it. Jake going to be flying to the liquor store. Jake going to be flying to work. He's going to be doing magic tricks. Hey, this ain't time to do it right now. So that power is going to come when we need it the most. Okay. But it says here, uh, and covered the land of Egypt and the magicians did so with their enchantments and bought upon frogs upon the land of Egypt. So he tried to basically mimic the most high's uh, power. Okay. Because you had a bunch of witches that was at a, a Pharaoh's court. It was full of witches and warlocks, man. Okay. They was able to call and show you that the left hand energy or the left hand side have power too because clearly they were operating on the left hand side like it said it here then felt then it says uh then pharaoh called for moses no salakia seven it says and the magicians did so with their enchantments and bought upon frogs upon the land of egypt that was the left hand energy versus the right hand but look at what the right hand did it says and pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said entreat the lord that he may take away the frogs for me and for my people, and I will let the people go that they may sacrifice unto Yahweh. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me when I should entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only. Okay. But if you go down a few more verses, man, a hey, more plagues came out. Okay. Because the flies, the, the locusts, the waters turned into blood, all those things were a big factor at that time. So, we can expect this to happen again in the land of Egypt, America, man. All right? If you believe. Uh, let me go to the book of Revelation 11 verses. I'm going to start at verses. Yep, this is the book of uh, Revelation 11. 
And I'm going to start at verses uh, 5. It says, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed, man. That's because we're going to have that spiritual power. Okay? And it reads here, it says, And these have the power to shut heaven, that it rain, not in the days of their prophecy, and the power over the waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth for all the plagues as often as they will. So we're going to have utter will over these plagues, man. Okay? And just right now, by us doing the work, and we're putting curses on Babylon, we're actually bringing the plagues upon the earth through our word, through the power of Yahweh, by Shemi, Yahweh, Shai. That's the reason why this shit is happening on the planet Earth, brothers. You don't even realize that we're a big part of prophecy, man. Okay? We're playing a big part of prophecy. When you see tsunamis and sinkholes open up, that has something to directly do with the man of the Lord, through the Most High, if you believe that. You know? So uh, I'm going to just end it there. I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Shai. And with that, Shalom and a Baba